Welcome back. Par for the discourse. Another week down. Here we are, Erica and Nicole. Reconvening during this pandemic. Thank God for technology. <laughs> April, April 19th. It's April 19th. Yesterday was your daughter's Violetta's birthday. Yep, nine. Um, and the story, my connection to Violetta is that, um, and just, I, this is just came to me, was that the first time I went to Spain to visit you, um, you, you were not pregnant. No. And right after that visit, <laughs> you and your husband went to Italy and got pregnant with Violetta. And love was in the air because <laughs> I had just on lo in love as well right before i came to spain that's right and this past thursday uh april 16th is the day that we mark as our anniversary so it was our 10-year anniversary so we celebrated by ordering a pizza love that love that, <laughs> love that story love the token of 10 years right there yeah, and, uh, even, even from the pizza place that I wanted to get. <laughs> Why would it be at this point? <laughs> that's not even where I was. That's not even where I wanted to get. Pizza. Did it suck, or was it at least good? Good. It was. It was right. good. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, you, but, you uh, do what you can. You do what you can. So my our present uh, uh, to both of us was a freestanding hammock for our our cement square block uh, backyard that we have here in Brooklyn, which is, um, I, I don't, that sounds like I'm being negative about it. I'm very, very appreciative of it. Many summers, we've lived in this apartment for six years. I hated this backyard because our neighbors was a dentist and it was all overgrown and I never, we just didn't spend time back there. Actually, when we first moved here, the neighbors in the basement had it was a mess it was all their crap but now we have both the first floor in the basement and um it's all ours yeah does and anyone does anyone go out there or just you guys just us since so when we first moved in um the <laughs> no questions uh when when we first moved in the people in the basement were kind of squatting they they didn't pay their rent and so the landlord evicted them and so we kind of bargained with the landlord to open up and and rent us the two floors and make it a duplex because then that made the basement not an illegal apartment. So um, that was like maybe when we first like two years into living out here in Bay Ridge, and then and then like our lives changed and um, Rock's his mom got sick and and we ended up moving her into the basement, which that wasn't the original plan and um that's okay and life changes but we you know um but we have the backyard and i kind of never spent a lot of time cleaning it up or getting it to any kind of so this is what i'm i'm, I'm kind of spending some time back there and and uh potting some plants and i'm gonna try to grow some things so that's uh that's the the time that i'm I'm spending right now because the weather is getting nicer and um, I'm I'm not you know I, I said before like I don't get all the walking like I do need to go for a walk but I am getting a lot of exercise around here um, I'm so I'm I I don't need to you know I probably should go for a walk because I could go down by the water which would be nice I think we're gonna maybe do that today or tomorrow um, but I don't need to do it every day yeah it's funny because so many people that I've been talking to have been like they've taken up the hobby of growing things. Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. Like, we have to a little bit, but not even to eat it or to to whatever it is you're doing with it, but just to see that something can grow. <laughs> it's like um, I had some leftover seeds from uh, my hardware store uh, days. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I found them and I uh and and our neighbor gave us this uh a pound I don't know it's like a big bag of potting mix and I yeah. was like 
I mean, it's like somebody's telling me, do something, will you? So it really kind of forced me to be in the backyard. Then we ordered this freestanding uh, hammock from Ikea, a hundred dollars. This is the best hundred dollars we've spent. Um, it is so awesome. Um, Did you test it out? <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, I was in it. I took, I sent you a picture, right? Yeah, but um, you weren't in it when you took the picture. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was in it. It was my feet. Oh, that, that angle, that angle. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I sent you the picture of my feet. Yeah, I was thinking but, of the other picture of the actual, the full thing. I could see everything. Look, I have, I have weed leaves on my oh, side. Nice. That's Tomorrow, really, tomorrow's 420. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'll keep note of that. How that's going to change from any other day. I know, I know. <laughs> I always felt about it. <laughs> so I always felt about it. Um, so how how are things in Madrid? What's going on there? Um, what can I tell you? Well, um, okay, this isn't this is something new. Today, um, the prime minister gets on the news. I, I I'm starting to think this is all just BS to appease the crowd. But now the latest is that the 27th of April, which I think is next Monday. Yeah, a week from tomorrow. They're finally gonna let children go out. Children under 12 can go out with one parent. No details about how, when, where, none of that. It's just, that was the information given. But then in the next breath, it's like, well, it depends on the community's approval. And so I'm thinking Madrid's not gonna approve that because we were hit the hardest, so I'm thinking they're not gonna l allow that to happen yet. You know what I mean? Our, uh, I mean, it's just so different. Is there a, a lot of unrest amongst people? Are people protesting? Are people well, we've been pretty obedient, but they are starting to come out with, um, I don't wanna say propaganda, but people are coming out and like, protesting this and starting to talk about it only in the sense of not the way the u.s is like people going we're we're not doing this it's not yeah, like we'll, that. we'll get to that we'll get to that in a second i, I know to, i wanted to hear how like civilized yeah. Let, oh, let's let's get roll the yeah let's get into that <laughs> so really the argument is and it makes sense is that spain is the only european country apart from i think russia that's not you're not allowed to go outside children have not been outside for almost six weeks and the their mental health experts and physicians are coming out saying this is actually bad for the brain and the body like this can't we have to i mean i'm lucky that i live in an apartment that's spacious but i'm thinking about my last place or even places that are smaller than that where people are like crammed in and don't have sunlight. I mean, some people have it worse. I recognize that, but I mean, the, it seems like there'd be a way that you could at least let the kids go in the courtyard. That's going to be off limits. That they've already said, no parks. So I'm thinking, which would be great. We live near that great park along the river where you feel like you're in the country. So just let people go out like every 15 minutes kind of thing. Wow, you can't do that even. I don't know. I mean, how are you gonna how are you gonna police this thing? I don't know. I mean, Were you guys talking about the testing and like how that has to happen. You have to test everybody before you start letting them go out. Or oh no, I the testing subject isn't. No, I never heard that actually. That's not even how would they how are they gonna do that? I mean. Uh, I don't know. Well, I guess that's not what was going on in Singapore, that they were testing everyone and that's how they are able to regulate. I don't, I don't even know. I'll play ignorant on that one. Yeah, I, we're not experts here. We're just talking about our own lives. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. So, um, and how we're surviving. Um, but New York is, um, all right, so I was thinking about this and I guess this is like a good time to kind of bring it up because it's something that as an, as New Yorkers, like 
it was something that I felt and I've been thinking about 9-11 a lot and, and it's mm. like when I, I mean after I got over like the like first couple of weeks of like anxiety of like whoa what the fuck you know I had a lot of like flashbacky you know 9-11 type things mm. um, I had this one thought about um at, during that time I was 22 years old and I had a job in so I had three jobs I had just got out of college and um one of my jobs that I was at that morning was in Soho and we couldn't go back to work right away but then there was a time where from 14th street to canal street we could go back to work and so we got called back to work and I had this that was at the time I think that was the only job I had after 9-11 because the other jobs I, I don't know I had like a waiting job or whatever it was yeah. like out of school so <clears throat> you know, it's retail, but it's in Soho. And, you know, it's, it's not a New York mom and pop shop. It's in every city across the country. And you could order your shit from this store online. It's, you're not supporting New York City by shopping there. Um, and while we were going back to work, it was really beautiful weather. And we couldn't keep the doors open to the retail space because it, the, the smell of the dead bodies and, and dust particles and all other kinds of crap floating around and but it was really beautiful weather and um and i've been thinking about that time lately and these these texas oil wives i'll say like texas wives from like uh, you know they had a lot of money they were coming and spending their money and i, I in my mind they were like their husbands were oil people i don't know that in my Ty mind yeah tycoons I'm generalizing and these women all had these shirts that said texas loves nyc and they like came in and spent all this money and i'm ringing them all up and i just this vision i remember being so disgusted like we couldn't open our doors because it smelled like dead bodies and these women came into our store to spend money and their little kids or little snot-nosed kids had remember 9-11 stuff that they bought down on canal street oh, God. like their swag that they bought you know what i mean like scully hats and, and baseball hats and t-shirts that said remember 9-11 or never forget or something yeah remember. yeah yeah and i just like that's kind of how i'm feeling like i'm remembering that and i'm remembering how i felt i was 22 years old and I was like, this is some bullshit. You don't give a fuck about New York City uh, or the people who live here. You're spending your own money to stimulate the economy. You know, it has nothing to do with the people who live here. Um, and mm -hmm. I, just, I just remember ringing these, these women up and their big hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything's bigger in Texas, isn't it? <laughs> and um and you know and that's like i kind of feel like gosh i you know we talked about last week like i'm so glad i'm not like 20 years old and like living with roommates and I, it would be really i i mean i don't know i don't know what i do i'm i'm glad that i have a little bit of a backyard and i'm in a like healthy relationship and and we're happy and we're figuring out some strategies and but like um it just reminded me of that moment. I keep thinking about that because, okay, so let's talk about um, like with the news this week is just, I'm, I don't know, I feel like I'm in an alternative um, reality. Like we're being responsible, intelligent, I'm, I'm, I don't know, city folk. I even where, I mean, it even seems like, it, 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 do you think that people, and I know because you know, I know you're in a city, uh, do you think people in these villages or these places that they're, are they, those people frustrated? Do you think they're, do you know what I mean? Compare like Madrid to, um, you know, New York and like, you know, the country. I don't know. I mean, these people who are in villages, I mean, I'm out of touch with them right now, but I think a lot of them can maybe go out a little bit if they have a little property, but it's still the way it's set up. I mean, you know this because you've been to villages with me in Europe, like, right. It's still not necessarily so open where people are going to be walking around. I think for the most part, 
people are inside. I think most people are respecting what they're supposed to be doing here. But I did see something crazy. I didn't think it was this high, but the government's fined over 60,000 euros. Like for every time they see somebody, it's minimum 300 euros to somebody that's out and about. So if that if it's that high, then people have been disobeying, I guess. They've been out taking a chance. I mean, you said that you had a neighbor that got mad that he got a ticket on a, he was taking a bike ride. God, yeah. Well, Eduardo, no. Eduardo told me there's a, a lot of checkpoints because he's been going to the studio, but he said there are like checkpoints and people are stopping them. I mean, should, I, I, and I guess, I guess the mentality of uh, these uh, so-called freedom fighters or libertarian libertarians or whatever, <laughs> uh, you know, that just, you can't tell me what to do. I just don't. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm, what I'm, do you think that is? Do you think that's like, don't, that's don't. just ignorance? Do you think that's just ignorance for? Um, it's so confusing. It really is because I don't understand. Um, <clears throat> I don't understand. Yeah. I don't. Or do you think it's like, like what you said, you can't tell me what to do. Like, these are my freedoms. And um but I don't know, how can you deny the science about it? I just don't understand, like, what is the big sacrifice for most of these people who are blowing their traps about it? I think for the most part, maybe I'm wrong, but the people who are really loud about it are not necessarily the ones who are suffering even financially and all that. Right. Well, I mean, I guess I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm following fake news, who knows, but... Yeah, I heard that some of these protesters were like business owners and people that are like, my businesses are suffering. I have hundreds of employees and, you know, um, they're being, you know, yeah, they're, they're sick of sitting in their big houses. I don't know. No, I don't. Right. I, I, I mean. No one's denying that the economy is like atrocious right now. That's not, but what can we do? Isn't health, health has to be first has to be i mean am i being am i being like blind to it i don't know i, I don't think so but <laughs> um i mean i don't know it's so uh, yeah so it's very sad i don't know what that's going to mean it but so i i guess getting back to this whole vision that i keep going back, back to about these texas women, i just yeah. don't think anybody's going to give a shit about new york and i and i kind of feel like i've i've had a few people from outside of New York go, oh, how, how, you know, like, how is it for you there? Like, and, um, I mean, New Yorkers are on top of each other. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. It's a different place, but that's what we love about it. So we're going to have to figure it out. And, um, I, I so no, ooh, it's getting cloudy here. <laughs> what is that? That was crazy. Um, uh, so I guess another thing this week, we started doing these recordings, um, kind of like this, um, this format is super easy. So the, uh, magazine, uh, we started doing some podcast video chats, um, with some artists and it's just been so like, I don't want to push on you and do too many, um, like we're doing like one or two a day. If there's like, we're not in the mood, you know, we're not doing it. Um, and we're doing it out of the, just the love of the community and the culture. But um, it's been really inspiring to talk to artists because they're, you know, used to spending a lot of time alone creating. So this is like a really good time. And there's, so, I always feel like kind of creative people are already ahead of the curve of, of, um, you know, like people, I, I don't know if you've seen, like, there's this, you know, thing was going around. I know, I know you're not on Facebook anymore. Um, but it was like, you know, if you don't think that artists are important, just think about the, the movies, the videos, the books, all the things, you know, the, the content that you're sitting in your house yeah. looking at is by artists. Your entertainment um, this, these days. <laughs> all, right, exactly. You know, all the stuff that you love is, is created by, you know, artists. So it's been really um, 
helpful for us to like connect with them even if it's this way um and just seeing how they're doing and how they're handling it and you know i always kind of think yeah they're like 10 steps ahead of, of i feel like new yorkers in general and i hate saying that or maybe it's just people who are, are i don't know what the hell it is i really don't but i feel like we're already like okay i get it let's be smart but when there's all these other people that that are not <laughs> who's suffering the people who are you know what i mean like i don't yeah. know i keep thinking about um it's funny you mentioned that about like 9 11 and when you we were younger because i keep putting myself like these different scenarios in my head like okay this is the reality now but what if this had happened or what you know what if i were 20 years younger what if i lived here what if i had no job what if i you know all these different scenarios what if i we're in some abusive relationship. What if I had an illness, you know, loads of things that. What if, what if the, um, I just forgot his name. What, what if the, um, remember the roommate I had? Oh yeah. I knew you were going to go oh, there. I just, this space, what, what, what do we used to call him? the fish, the fish. Yeah. I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> I, I was taught thinking about him because he's Canadian. I don't know why. Mm. Or know how you would say um, sleeping, are we? <laughs> and I was thinking how we had to pack his stuff and kick him out because he was such a drug addict. And <laughs> the <laughs> stories from our 20s, I mean, like I've definitely, we've had some crazy people in our lives and he was one of them. And I, I, you know, he's a nice guy and everything, but um, he was a fucking drug addict. Can we, are we swearing on this? Yeah. Well, wait, can I say, can I add to that story? Because yeah. you're, you're taking that extreme. But I would bet my bottom dollar that if you were in the other situation that you had been in, your other roommate, okay, we know who we're talking about here, mutual friend, um i'm pretty sure that she would have and presently probably isn't following any of this she's probably going out she would have been going out bringing the stuff back the germs back into your house yeah i think about living with multiple roommates in that <laughs> i'm sure of it yeah well yeah i think i talked about a friend of mine who um had roommates in his I don't know if we talked about it on or yeah. off the no it was off it was off. um but that he uh, had a roommate who was like you know when he doesn't want to hang out with him he just leaves you know <laughs> when he doesn't want to be around the guy it's like well you just go someplace else and that right now they're all stuck together um but I think things are are working out I think he the roommate went someplace else I think so um things are better yeah. But yeah, so artists are um, very good at being alone um, mm -hmm. and maybe will help get people through this because that's, oh, so do you want to talk about the global citizen thing since we're talking about Yeah, artists? we can talk a little bit about that. That's a good segue. I saw it, some clips. It made me think of you because when we turned it on, Stevie was playing and I, it made me think of you. Right, which I'll watch anything he does. I love Stevie Wonder, but... I mean, I, I actually was like, I looked at clips and then I was forwarding so I could see what was going on. And I felt a couple of things. One, I must be like out of tune and old because I don't even know half the people that are there. And that made me think, I'm like, even when I was like really young, like a kid, I never followed like 20 year old superstars. Like I, the youngest people that I followed were probably at the time late 20s like think even madonna cindy lauper like all those 80s things well they, they were not, they were not 20 though or like 21. weren't they weren't they young not I that like, closer oh. to 30 closer to 30 for sure oh no, no i think she was young when she when madonna moved to new york she was like she was like right out of um and she dropped out of uh, college she went to she was a dance major at university of michigan I might be wrong about that. I think I'm right about that though. Yeah, but I think Madonna was born in 58, which makes her 30 years older than 
us. But I'm saying when she be when her a twenty years older. What am I talking about? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. She was young. I don't know. Okay. I'm, we should have a fact checker on us. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> No, okay, well, let's get back to the content. The content of that, uh, I thought it was cheesy, I'm sorry, but I, maybe it's because I'm negative about everything I'm seeing these days. I just find a lot of it, I don't know. Help me out here. What did you, what did you think? I didn't, well, like I said, it was kind of background. I was uh, listening more than I was watching because I was working on, uh, I'm trying to move photos. I'm do I have a whole photo project. I'm doing. so I actually was sitting yeah. here at my desk in my window and the TV's behind me, so I had it on and I wasn't really watching, but it didn't sound good. The John Legend thing sounded good. And then I turned to look at the screen and I saw all of his um awards behind. <laughs> I mean, are we trying to recreate We Are the World? It's not gonna happen that way. I mean is that what we're doing? I mean, did you see that? Did you see that atrocity of those D-listers that did um, that Imagine video like a week or two oh, no, ago? I didn't, I didn't watch it. I heard about it though. Um, <laughs> did you recognize Lady Gaga? I don't want to like. Did you even recognize her? I mean, I knew it was her, but she's always morphing too. Right? Like, I don't. I, she just doesn't look. So she's changed a lot of things, right? Like Beyonce too. What happened to her face? Well, see, that looked like a filter. I thought. I don't know. I don't know. I, that kind of looked fun. Yeah, you're right. Something, something about that didn't look right. But I felt like Lady Gaga looked. Her nose definitely right. Longer. And her, like I, I don't know. Something was weird. Um. So what? We started watching Shit's Creek. Oh, I heard that that, you know, someone recommended that to me. I know it's like a couple of years old and there's like tons yeah. of, but they just had their final, I think. Mm. So we never watched it. We never got into it. So I was like, let's get into something that like, we can watch a couple episodes here or there. Yeah, that's so better. That's, that's how we roll. No, I, I like doing that too. I don't like waiting week after week. Who does that? <laughs> Let's watch two, but then like we might have a whole like after we might like spend a whole day and finish it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. What day is it? <laughs> <laughs> is I finished. It a, I finished Ozark. What'd you think? Very good. I liked it. I don't want to spoil it's, for anyone. Ruth, awesome. I won't say anything. Ruth, I love her. Who isn't Great. she? Your, is she that? I mean, yeah. I love Jason. But I also really liked Helen. I don't like the pants that she wore. They remind me of pants from that store that I used to work at. Oh, those like culottes? Yeah. <laughs> they remind me. Of, I love how I'm not saying the name of the store that yeah, I used yeah, to work at, yeah. but it's that store. That's what it reminds me of. And and every <laughs> every time I saw her, I'm like, you know, why do they dress her like that? Every outfit, it was consistent though. Mm. I think I know why. She's six foot one. She's tall. But I, I didn't, those pants didn't, it was always the same kind of cut. And this. Waiting for the floods. But, you know, it was consistent wardrobe, at least. Yeah. I'll get for that. Um, yeah, I was sad to see that, that end. So I guess there's going to be another season of that show, huh? Yeah, but who knows? It'll be two years by the time that comes out again. So, uh, yeah, probably, right. Oh well, that's that's what you kind of think. Like, okay, <laughs> so what's you know, once these shows wrap up, that's it. Like, I I watch. I know you don't watch The Walking Dead, um, but watching that, I know. I'm so it's like I'm the kind of person that when you um you go to a movie like and it sucks like I have to I have to stick it out to the end even I have to like finish the job you know what I mean <laughs> well wait can yeah. I, let me tell a story about that let me tell a funny story about you and I with that so this is probably 10 11 years ago avatar <laughs> what? 
Okay, let, let me lay down the background. So we're, oh. up, we're, we're at my mother's house, about 60 miles out north of the city. You came up to, to I think, was it Christmas time? I don't even remember. This is 2009? Yeah, it was before oh. any kids were around. It was before I met Ronnie, I think. Yeah. Or right before I met him, right? It I was think. before, yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. So we, so we went to the movies, you and I, was my brother Nick there too? Yeah. And Eduardo, we went to see Avatar, which was a long movie anyhow, but we were there and I guess around... 45 minutes before the ending, or maybe even a little before that, all of a sudden the screen gave out to the point where the only way you could watch the film was if you had one eye closed. With the glasses. We had the glasses. Yeah. So in order to have anything focused, you had to watch. So we're watching this thing with one eye, okay? And then suddenly everything turned off. I think it was about 40 minutes, 45 minutes before the ending. Everything turned off. So now we're like, well, now what do we do? And uh, people were running around in the theater. Remember, they were like, <laughs> what do we do? We're like, where do we go? They gave us a voucher. We're like, we're not coming back here. <laughs> Can I just say I never saw the ending? I saw it <laughs> on a plane. It was like available on a flight that I took. And it was like, thank God I, I did get to see it. Can I, okay. That is, and I remember saying, uh, that's what we were laughing hysterically about. It's like, I, this, I don't even know if I really am liking this movie. I just have to know what the fuck is gonna happen. It's like, it messes yeah. with your head. I remember this kid I knew growing up, he used to say, um, if you're listening to music, it's really bad for your brain to like stop it in the middle of a song. You have to wait till the song ends and then stop the music. You have this theory that it like, okay. so maybe it's like the same. I, I hate like not knowing the end of, uh, okay. Can I tell you a little addendum to that story? I met Stephen Lang. He did Bikram at the Upper West. Did I ever tell you this? I, maybe. I don't. I, I plays the He's the guy who plays the captain. Now you have to watch the movie. This is like, you already saw 12 Monkeys. Now you have to watch Avatar. Stephen Lang is the captain. He's the guy with the silver hair. He's the like silver fox of the movie. He does Bikram and he used to come to the Bikram Upper West Side. And me and him used to talk all the time. Love him. He's so great. I miss, like missed like seeing him when I didn't work there anymore. His daughter is a street artist. She's an artist. She's an illustrator. She's an artist. We've interviewed her. She is dating a, another artist who was a friend of mine. Um, and uh, just Grace Lang and Ramiro. Hello. If I, anyway, it's so, it's so crazy. Anyway, I because when I met him, I just thought he was an interesting guy. And then I found out that he was the actor who played yeah. that after I got to know him. Because everybody's like, oh, he's so, like, and I was like, oh, is he in movies? Like, I don't know. I was just chatting with him. He's just, like, a real personable guy. Those people that do Bikram, yoga, you know, interesting individuals. Mm-hmm. All right. What else? We, we re went all over the place. We went all over. We talked about the, a little bit about the crap concert. Americans are crazy. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to... And it's my piece by saying, like, this might, even though I've been negative, this is going to get a little eerie now. I'm actually starting, I don't know if I'm surrendering or what, but uh, I'm actually fine now with being inside. I don't want this thing to end. <laughs> I don't want to go out there. I'm actually not afraid of getting sick, but I just don't want, I'm afraid of people. I don't want to go outside. I don't know how I'm going to react with, interact with people people um yeah you mean not the people that you know and want to see you mean like the general public like you think i'm going into a crowd anytime i i hated going uh, i mean i see this is where i i am appreciating kind of things 
I know everybody's trying to connect and there is the technology to continue to do so, mm -hmm. but it's kind of nice to revert back to some old school. Like I always say, I'm an analog girl in a digital world. Like I really appreciate the, um, anyway, I loved going to concerts in small venues. I always loved, you know, and I guess that's like when you're younger, you're paying attention to what, you know, I'm not going to go to some smaller venues now, but um, you know, all my favorite artists, they're like all in big concert venues and I hate going to big festival. I mean, I just, yeah. I kind of started getting agoraphobia probably after 9-11, not agor, not, um, what is it? Claustrophobia? No, it's just like big crowds. It's not like, a, do you know what I mean? I think yeah. it, it's a little like agoraphobia, I think. Yeah. Is, yeah. I get a big crowd and I'm like, nah. I liked uh, the smaller, you know, venues, but as soon as, you know, it's too crowded, I want to be on the outside of it. I don't want to be in the middle of a yeah. um, crowd. Um, but I can't imagine, I wouldn't even put myself in that situation right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, you know, so I'm, yeah, I, I hear you. Um, I think the, the, the being able to be a little bit outside. I mean, if you can take walks at least. That would make the difference for me. If I could do that, I'll, I'll be okay. Just give me a little air and that's it. Everything else I need is here. I mean, th this week was the first week I actually had final projects with my students on like, a, it's not, I didn't use Zoom, but so, it's something similar. And um, I actually felt good doing it only because I think I'm good at what I do, but I'm not good at the way I'm doing it now. So I don't, I don't really feel very productive, like in my work world right now. I don't feel like I'm doing the right things. But uh, the fact that I had some kind of contact, it actually did make me feel a little bit better. Mm. It's yeah, not the way I normally do it, but it was face to face at least. And it was a little bit. So tomorrow I've got four hours of that straight, but you know. That makes sense, right? Yeah. Hmm. So like you said, there's ways to get around it, but it, part of that I do miss too, like the interaction, but to a limit. <laughs> I would think the kids are gonna, I, I mean, we're, especially Alex too. He's four, is he? he's not, he's not yeah. five. He's gonna be five in October. Yeah, he looked out the window yesterday and he saw some guy in the distance walking and he goes, that guy's going to die. And we were like, what? And he goes, he's going to die from, and then he goes, he says it in Spanish. He goes, from the coronavirus. That's so <laughs> we're like, no, no, no. You don't, you know, I had to explain to him that that's, but I mean, who knows what's going on in his head because he hasn't seen the light of day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sucks. So. I think it'll hopefully it'll end soon and we could just go out a little bit. That'll be better. People that take walks. Are they going to provide masks for people? I mean, I would, you don't, the testing isn't going to be, you're not going to be doing any kind of universal testing. No. That's interesting. Cause I, I, I thought that's what I feel like a lot of people are calling. Like that's the only way that this is going to work, but I, I don't know. If it goes state by state, you know, like, what I just can't uh I I, I hear civil war <laughs> either that's, civil war, yep. or war I don't know what which whichever comes first I mean you know what I mean that's what's going to happen because there'll be people who are going to get privileged to it and then there's going to be I just don't see that happening but all right well let's keep our our heads up yes and uh Tomorrow's 420. Tomorrow's 420. I'll, I'll do something in honor of that, and I'm sure you will. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry, though. I'm going to go get some lunch. Um, good All right. Checking in, and uh, we'll check in next week. Okay. Thanks for meeting up. Talk to you all later. Bye.